I saw this myself when I gave a group of junior doctors a short test on nutrition and they were outscored by my receptionist. And if this reflects the nutritional knowledge level of the average doctor, what hope is there for the general public? They might, for instance, be guided by the food star system, not understanding that it is an absolute joke which is being gamed by industry. Take this cereal, which contains 17% sugar and scored five stars, while this salt cured salmon scored just 1.5 stars. Is it any wonder people make bad food choices? And just as the public can be misled by the food star system, doctors can be deceived by a lack of openness and transparency in the reporting of data. You may be familiar with the Women's Health Initiative study published in 2006. This massive study of over 48,000 females cost 700 million US dollars. It was designed to definitively determine whether or not low fat diets benefited health. Well, that's not exactly true. You see, the investigators already held the view that low fat diets would be beneficial and all they really wanted to do was to prove their hunch. To do this, participants were randomised to either a low fat or a regular diet and then followed up for about eight years. Given the size and prominence of this study, its results were published with great fanfare. The lead investigator going on record as saying the findings demonstrate the need, indeed the benefits of dietary reductions in fat even greater than the 8-10% to 10 studied, except the results showed nothing of the sort. Not that you could figure it out if you read the results table or the conclusion. No, to get to the truth you had to go to page 661 of the journal in which it was published, and there, in obscure text, was the only statistically significant finding of the whole study, the only finding not likely due to chance alone. The finding was that those randomised to the low-fat diet did worse. Those with a history of heart disease who were randomised to the low-fat group had a 26% higher chance of complications, like heart attacks. How was this finding from a publicly funded $700 million study kept hidden from public view? How were the researchers able to conclude that this study didn't just support low-fat diets, but supported low-fat diets even more extreme than what they studied? The way the results were presented was flat out deceptive, leading doctors and scientists and ultimately the public the world over to believe this study provided evidence for low fat diets. You may have also heard of the Sydney Diet Heart Study, a good quality randomised control trial examining in men who had had heart attacks the effect of replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat and the result on whether or not this diet actually reduced the risk of death was actually destined to never be published. That's right, it was only a stroke of luck that a researcher uncovered the original study data in a basement and was able to decode it and publish it some 40 years after the study was concluded. And so, in 2013, the results of the Sydney Diet Heart Study were finally published in the British Medical Journal. The conclusion, reducing saturated fat in the diet and increasing polyunsaturated fats increased the risk of death by 62%. This is probably one of the most important bits of research you've never heard about, and truth be told, one that you almost didn't find out about. 